Welcome back to Mr. Gard's math class. This lesson we're going to be looking at congruent triangles. In the previous lesson we were talking about congruent shapes, which meant they were the same shape whether they were rotated, flipped or trans, uh, translated. The same principle applies to triangles. There are four golden rules regarding congruent triangles. Each of them has an abbreviated uh, term, and you can probably see them on the screen now. They are color-coded for this explanation. The first one is the SSS rule. What this means is side, 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 meaning that the sides are mapped. Because of this, you cannot create a triangle that has three matching sides and have anything different to the images for them. So if they have these dimensions and I didn't change the length of these sides, there is no way I could put together a triangle other than the one that you're seeing in front of you. Try it. Create a triangle with a length of let's say two centimeters, three centimeters, and four centimeters. Whatever you do, you're gonna find that the triangles are exactly the same. The next one is the SAS. And what that means is we have a matching side, a matching angle, and another matching side. So I've got kind of an example here drawn in blue. I've got this side, matching this side and this side matching this side and I've given them a set angle looks like it's roughly 70 degrees now I can't open or close that angle anymore because it's locked and because those side lengths are also locked the only length I can put in to join up this triangle is one one length so, in other words, the rule is if you can find a side, angle, side in this order where it goes a side, an angle in the middle, and another side pointing out, then the third side must also be matching, which makes the triangle congruent. The next one is angle, angle, side. So here we only have one side length that is matching. We have two angles that match. So what I've drawn to kind of explain this is only part of these two arms. Because the angles are set, those arms are set. And if I was to say, draw it like this, because it's got to keep going on forever, you'll find that those sides must be matching, like so. In other words, if you find a triangle that has two matching angles and the side lengths between them are matching, then you know that this triangle must also be congruent. And finally, the RHS. What this means is you've got right angle, hypotenuse side and another side length. It's similar to the one before but not quite the same. Because it's got a right angle we know this angle. And again if you fill in the you know fill in the blanks there's only one way that this can work. If the hypotenuses are matching and one of the other side lengths are matching in a right angle triangle then that third length must also be matching, which then does turn it into a side, side, side example. So the crux of today's lesson is these four rules. If you can remember the four rules or you can identify them, then that is your proof that your two triangles are congruent. Quite often you're expected to prove that two angles are congruent not just say that they're the same, you have to say why they're the same. 
So a bit like the last lesson, you need to give an explanation or write this triangle is congruent to this triangle, and then in brackets, write why they're, tr why they're congruent. So you can just simply write SAS or AAS, depending on what the words mean. That's it from today's lesson. Thank you for listening.